this video, Will Smith and Devon Franklin say three false things about God. Here's number one. So man, listen, for the 25 years that I have known you, mm -hmm. right? Everybody that knows that you played a role in my life, yeah. in the church, yeah. the number one question, they were mm -hmm. like, yo, is, is Will a man of faith? Does he love the Lord? <laughs> I'm like, yes. Okay, so, but I want, yeah. to, I want you to hear you, from the horse's mouth. You, Are you, you a man of faith? You can't Do you get, love the Lord? You can't get where I get if you don't love the Lord. Exactly. You don't, you don't get to sit how I sit and move how I move if you right. don't love the Lord. Exactly. Uh, yeah, okay. you know, you, you'd be seeing a whole lot of other repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> now, I love Will Smith as much as the next guy, but that statement right there was the prosperity gospel on steroids. For us to say that if we love the Lord God, we will be like Will Smith, we'll be rich, successful, famous, we'll get to these high places and sit in these high seats, is completely heretical. I mean, I myself, I know many Christians who love the Lord and yet they live on minimum wage. I know many Christians who love the Lord God and yet they can't even get out of bed because they're crippled by so much pain. So why is the prosperity gospel so dangerous? Well, at the heart of this gospel, it's not about Christ Jesus shedding his blood so that every sinner that comes to Christ in faith and repentance can be washed white than snow. At the heart of this gospel, it's not about the Lord Jesus Christ raising himself back from the dead to give hope to dead men and dead women that they too, if they put their trust in him, have a hope beyond the grave. No, at the heart of this gospel, it's about you, your material wealth, your success, your fame, your health. It's all about you. It's not about Christ. And if you are in the prosperity gospel, please just be honest with me right now. You've got to admit to me that your greatest source of happiness is not having a relationship with the living God who is so mighty, so wonderful, so pure. That isn't your greatest source of happiness. Your greatest source of happiness is what this great big God can do for you. What gifts he can give to you. What clout he can give to you. What fame, what success, what money he can put into your pocket. Because when he does all of those things, that's when you are most happy. I wouldn't do this because I'd get arrested, but suppose I had in your house and I listen to your prayers, what would be the main focus that I would hear in your prayers? Would it be about worshipping God? Would it be about praying for other people and the needs of other people? Or would the main focus of your prayers be all about you? You know, I've been challenged by this in my own life recently. A lot of my prayers have just been me pouring out all of my worries and my anxieties and all of my needs to God. And please don't misunderstand me. We are to do that. We have a heavenly father who inclines his ear and he loves to hear his children crying out and he loves to answer prayers. But I suppose what I'm really asking you and I is this. Can we echo the words of the apostle Paul? Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing. Christ Jesus, my Lord. Before I reveal number two to you, I forgot to mention one thing. One of these three false things that Will Smith and Devon Franklin say is more toxic than all of them put together. And I want to see if you can guess, if you can discern which one you think it is before I reveal the answer. Okay, here's number two. But here's the thing I thought was so amazing. To me, this movie is one of the most faith movies that I've ever Absolutely, seen. Absolutely, yep. There's a scripture that says, you know, faith uh, without works is dead. Mm -hmm. And faith is the, is the substance of things we hope for and the evidence of things we don't see. That's beautiful. This dude didn't know tennis. Right. His daughters had never played. Mm -hmm. He created an 85 page plan <laughs> on what was going to happen what? and he did not veer until it manifested. If you want a little backstory to this interview, Will Smith is being interviewed about his latest film, King Richard, where Will plays Richard Williams, the father of Serena Williams and Venus Williams. Now, if you didn't know this already, the Williams family are Jehovah Witnesses. And what happened was, Richard Williams wrote out this long play of all of the things that he wanted to happen in his family's life. And at the end of that script was his dream that his two daughters would become the two greatest tennis players in history. Now I want to make something awfully clear because this is really important. This idea that if we put enough belief, enough hope, enough faith in a dream and one day it will manifest, one day God will bring that dream to come true. I want you to know something. That is not Christianity. That is the cursed doctrine of the law of attraction trying to disguise itself as Christianity. These are the toxic teachings that we hear from Tony Robbins, from Oprah Winfrey, from the book The Secret. And I wanna tell you something, when we try and mingle these things with Christianity, that's like mingling sewage with pure water. It just contaminates everything. 
But I hear exactly what you're thinking right now. You're saying, well Joe, if manifesting your dreams is a load of nonsense, why is it that when Richard Williams wrote out that script, it one day came true, and his two daughters became the two most famous tennis players in the world. If it's a load of nonsense, why did it work for Richard Williams? I'll tell you why. Do you remember when the devil took Jesus up onto a high mountain to tempt him? And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said this, All of these great kingdoms I will give to you. Just bow down and worship me. Now why was that a temptation for the Lord Jesus Christ if Christ owned all of the world? It's a bit like me saying, I'll give you the WBC belt. You can have it for $10,000. Well, if I said that to you, you'd laugh at me and you'd say, that belt doesn't belong to you. It's Tyson Fury's. Who are you to tell me you can sell it to me? I'll tell you why it was a temptation. Because this world is under the captivity of Satan. Yes, Satan is a defeated foe. Yes, when Christ rose from the dead, he bound Satan and he showed him who the boss was. But the devil does still have an authority over this world. Oh yes, he knows his time is short. He knows that when Christ comes again, he's going to be overthrown. He's going to be knocked out. And the Lord Jesus Christ will set up his new kingdom on this earth. But right now, the devil still has a great deal of power over this world. And my friend, if you reach it to the very heights of fame, if you get to Hollywood success, all the money in the world, you need to ask yourself this question. Is it the Lord God who has raised you up so that millions of people will worship you? Or is it Satan who has raised you up so that millions of people will worship you? You see, the true Christian should be very wary of the limelight. If for any reason God allows that person to become famous or to be in the public eye, they must always remember this one thing. The Lord God said this, I will not give my glory to another. And we must always be saying, he must increase, but I must decrease. So, what do you think? Do you think number two is the most false, toxic teaching that was said in this interview? Well, we'll find out in a moment's time. But in the meantime, here's number three. In order to doubt, that means you don't trust God. And she said there was never a moment of doubt. When we set out as a family, we knew we were going to do what was ordained. They trusted God. Mm. And they, they believed that their devotion would be rewarded. Mm -hmm. This is a very dangerous teaching because our idea of blessing is very different to God's idea of blessing. You see, in Christ's kingdom, the way up is the way down. And if any of you want to be great, you must first become a servant. So, over to you. Who do you think is the most blessed person in all of world history? In all the people who've walked on this earth, who do you think was the most blessed person? Pause the video and leave the answer in the comment box. The answer is Jesus Christ. So, if Jesus Christ was the most blessed man ever to walk on this earth, what did his life look like? He wasn't born in a palace in Rome, but in a little meagre town called Bethlehem. He didn't live or grow up in Hollywood Boulevard, but in a basin at the lowest part of Israel called Nazareth. Jesus Christ, he didn't have friends with presidents, with kings, with famous people. No, he hung around with fishermen, tax collectors, and what some might call criminals. He didn't have a fine degree at one of the highest universities. No, he made himself familiar with splinters and hard labour. And perhaps worse of all, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, he didn't live for a hundred years and then die a peaceful death. No, he died at 33 years old, the most agonising death a death on a cross, so that he might save you from a very painful eternity. My dear friend, if you want to be blessed too, you also must take up your cross, deny yourself, and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from the fleeting pleasures, the sins of this world, and commit your life to him. That's what a blessed life looks like. Okay, here's the answer you've all been waiting for. Which of these three statements do I believe is the most toxic? It's actually number one. But there is actually something that Will Smith did say that I do agree with. How is it that you want someone as a person of faith to connect to the message in this film? The, the simplicity of aligning your will with divine will. Yes, I can absolutely say amen to that. We are to align our will with God's divine will. But what happens if God's divine will for your life is what happened to this Christian man here? And I will warn you, this video might just make you cry. 